How's it going guys, it's Mr Lone Wolf and uh, today I want to test drive this beast, the GMC MH9500 I'll just call it the GMC from now on um, Yeah, I've been giving it a test, obviously recently it's had the all wheel drive added which you can find on uh, Lake Coved or Lake Coved So yeah, we'll get stuck into it First thing is the engine, right as I'm looking through here now the bottom one is like the most powerful and the middle one is kind of like the same power to weight but it um, is a bit better on fuel. I just want to show you this because this was from a few hours earlier while I was just messing around doing my own little tests. Look, when I scroll down to the bottom engine it's got one less bar of power and then I go back to the middle engine and it goes up and that's why I was looking now thinking what? Like I've, I usually read all through the description of the engine and all sorts so when I found it, I was like, that's weird. I'm surprised I've not had <laughs> the most powerful engine in it. And uh, yeah, I don't know what the deal is with that. I just thought I'd mention it because it might catch a few of you out. I don't know. You might not notice. I didn't notice. But the bottom engine is the one you want. But for some reason, it was uh, yeah doing that. So I, I've kept the uh, high range gearbox in it. As for the suspension, it actually raises it a pretty decent amount on this one. You can kind of see from where the diff is about level with the bumper. And uh, yeah, it goes up quite nicely, that's what she said. Um, as for tyres, because it's got the dual rears, it's like there's no muds or anything for it, so you just go like, was it a highway, all terrain, off road, and then chained. So I'm going to stick with the chained. Uh, as for the winch, I'm going to do the advanced medium. See, I just grabbed that off another truck, My, uh, I can't remember which one now, but it's nice that you can just swap them around. Um, diff locks engageable obviously you want not unlocked spare wheel goes just in front of the right rear tyres it's on the frame I'm gonna leave it off I usually do just because it could catch or something um, as for the it's like not a full-on snorkel but it's not far off certainly worth adding I would say well then again we'll get into that later it's uh but I, I'm certainly gonna keep it on uh, yeah, all-wheel drive, like that's what they've added and it's funny as well because you can kind of see normally when you switch to all-wheel drive it changes the front axle as well but with that you can see it's just kind of been stuck on which is fine, I'd like, I don't care for now it's, I'd rather have all-wheel drive than they wait another month while they draw an axle um, As for all the add-ons, actually loads are you can have the heavy crane, you can have that seismic vibrator module so I think it's near enough everything you can have on it. You got obviously all the like sideboards, the flatbeds, the maintenance trailer, the fuel trailer. Which, well, just looking there, it looks like it bottoms out a bit, but then it goes like it goes back up a little bit. So overall, they just need to reduce the weight of the fuel, or at least that trailer, or something with that trailer, I reckon, because the Scout fuel trailer isn't silly heavy. One good thing with this, I'll show you in a minute, is you can like obviously got the crane on and a sideboard bed, and I can tow a trailer. And there's not too many things that do that and uh, I'm not, to be honest, I'm not sure but if this could do it before, recently, it's like it probably wasn't worth it unless you're just going along a road. Uh, as for the rear bumper, you can't take these off unfortunately, so you've got to have one of them, in which case I just went for those ones because I'm pretty sure they're like mud flaps at the back and they're not actually going to get in the way, but that one sits the highest it's kind of out of the way the most, it ain't really going to make much difference. If I stick a loaf on the back, sometimes the loaf glitches, well, not, it's not the loaf's fault, it's like the mud guards on some trucks glitch through. Well, they're just not there, like when you put something on them, they just, yeah, it's not there. Um, all the usual add-on, I've got the fog light, I've not put the beacons on, but it's not because I don't like them, I just so happen to quite like the clean look of just fog lights at the minute. As for the stock bumper, like the stock one, it's not bad because it's the wheels are extremely close to the front. The second bumper up is what I've gone for in the end, and the third one just isn't as good, and it's basically the same as the stock. And the top one, it's a tiny bit lower than the stock one in general, but because it, it's got a slope on the front and that bar, it's not too bad. But in the end, I went for this one because one, it does look like it sits the highest, and two, you get two extra little light like, lamps at the corners of the bumper. So, not that it's going to make the world a difference, but, yep. Now, especially now the lights are all working and you can see them on the PS4. I like it. Um, yeah, adding the chrome parking lights and the twin horns. Uh, as for exhaust, you can't, like, it's you've got a choice between these two. 
And to be honest, as much as that, like, they look cool, I'll show you later, like they obviously stick quite high above the cab, so if and when you're rolling, they can play a part in it. Which could be good or bad, but as they're on the roof, <laughs> I would say leaning towards bad. Uh, all the alloys, is like, I, th I believe every option you can have, I just went, I think, for the third option. As for colours, looks pretty cool in uh, black, grey and white. But these are like the paint schemes, that's the one I believe you get when you buy it, or when you find it I suppose on the game, it's like the first truck you get basically. I quite like that one as well, the red one. That one looks, no I don't dislike it at all. That one, it just, to be honest, it reminds me of old like early 80s cars, like, I don't know, like an Austin Princess I think it was called, and it's just yeah, it's like an 80s English snot beige car colour. The green stands out quite nicely on my TV, so... It's only just a basic HD TV, so it's, uh, it's pretty pretty old now, really. Um, but yeah, for some reason the colours look different, slightly different on my phone. As for the look, I quite like the look of it, and it, for what it is, it sits quite high. Inside, it's uh, yeah, it looks pretty like an old school truck. I actually like that the mirror there is not only pretty decently sized, but I can actually see my tyre, and fair enough, I can mostly see the... Uh, mudguard thing it'd be nice if I could remove them but yeah I can actually sort of see what's going on I could probably put a different mudguard on but as you can see from that side anyway I can see mostly tire like the mudguard doesn't cover all of them looking out the back the exhaust is in the way a bit but yeah it's not the end of the world I can still see behind me as for the horn like it's yeah it's one of them ones that would like shit you up <laughs> if someone did it behind you So next to the rev, I like that the revs are pretty quick, I believe it only goes up to about 1500, but yeah, like I like that it climbs up there pretty quick. Setting off, you can go straight into high, and obviously this is the big thing, now it's got all wheel drive, it's, yeah, I'm definitely glad I waited until they added that, put it that way. Um, as for trailers, you can have, I believe, every single trailer. The height on them's not bad, like it's not the highest, but even the tyres on that, you're barely down to the alloys, which, yeah, there are better trucks, but there are worse trucks. This is just a quick demo. I did try the uh, towing the fuel trailer on the back, and for some reason that sits really close, but it must do with everyone in this setup, because all the other trailers had enough clearance. Well, they appeared to, this one certainly did. So yeah, pretty normal, like the sort of towing hitch bit is hitting the side of my truck, which it would on any. But yeah, it's pretty cool that you can actually have the crane, the sideboard and a trailer and then I could winch something behind that and uh, now it's got all wheel drive it's uh, yeah it basically makes it a different truck as you see that I slowed down a bit when I went around the corner if you hoof it at full speed and you kind of put the handbrake on you can roll it so just bear it in mind it's not horrible for rolling but it just it can roll it's one of them where it can get enough speed, it's a bit like the ANK, I'm not saying that isn't bad for tipping, because it is, but if it had an advanced special gearbox and only ever went 10 mile an hour, you wouldn't tip it as much. Um, going through here, see this is where it makes a difference, and I did go along the right hand edge a bit there, and I've been through there about 3 or 4 times tonight, and I didn't always get that speed in high range, but what I do like with high range, is it very rarely complains and stalls like if you get completely stopped or very close then yeah but out of you know all the trucks it's definitely easily in the top half of like trucks that like to stay in high range and are quite practical just to keep putting it in high range and it just makes the world a difference when that front axle is actually pulling rather than being pushed and I can show you like a pretty good example of that later on uh, Nailed one tree, fancied a go on that one, and uh, yeah, like, I don't think you're going to get any more than two trees, but one will do, like say if you just go a bit wide on a corner and you end up hitting one, like I'd rather knock it over than, it, yeah, ricochet me and my trailer all over the place, so it'll do. Even going through there, it was, uh, it sort of jumped through most of it pretty nicely, and then I got out of high pretty quick but with the high range gearbox etc etc 
everything wheel spins there in high range so but put it down to uh, auto I might have tried low on that one as well and uh, yeah got through just fine yet again it's like those front axles handling their own business so your rear end can just get on with what it's doing <laughs> then that's good like especially that the cabs are at the front of trucks obviously it's like there's a lot of weight on the front axle for it not to be a powered axle if that Ford Clip 9000 thing if that had um, front wheel drive like, like that would be great as well I, I still think it's pretty good and worth the money but this is now far more like practical and yeah I, I wouldn't go for some seriously heavy hauling missions but it's actually doable now and you're not just gonna get stuck I remember someone said ages ago on the right they're like yeah I drove it for about five minutes until I got stuck on a bloody banana peel and then I was like well that's enough of that and I did the same got stuck on like practically nothing and because it was just rear wheel drive it did have highway tires on but still now um, yeah going through the snow there it was nice at fair I've got a little bit of an iffy bounce there but it was fine it just I reckon it could go quicker if I kept reattempting it I do like that it got over there because it's only got 47 inch tires which aren't tiny but they're not massive either I like the Tager's 51 inch tires but anyway the fuel tanks and the raised suspension etc it all sat high enough that it didn't catch itself and it got the rears over and it didn't catch those mud guards I just left that bit and remember with the if you've seen the TUZ16 video, when you winch from the middle, it just twisted the TUZ to where it was like you're winching from the back. That how this just did it is more like it should. You winch from the middle and you kind of seesaw like adjacent to the uh, winch. So again, getting over there, I did put it in low with the diffs on. That doesn't bother me. Um, yeah, and again, no way would you get over there if it didn't have all-wheel drive. It just, the front axles need to power themselves and bite onto the barrier. So I wouldn't have even attempted that if it didn't have all the, well I probably would, but you know what I mean. I, I wouldn't have given it a lot of goes because I've already tried it and I know for a damn fact that it wouldn't have had a chance. So even going through here, it's not the fastest on the snow, but I wouldn't say it feels particularly uncomfortable or anything, it's just... In auto, it's like you got a bit of wheel spin and blah blah blah, and uh, obviously low. If you had an off-road gearbox, you can you can go into high low. The only thing, uh, my honest opinion of high low, is in the high range. First gear auto feels like high low. I've already got a medium low, and if I ever need low low, I'll stick a winch on something and pull myself quicker. It's like so. It's nothing against it. It's just I yeah I prefer the fast speed of high range basically I'm not even that bothered about all the auto gear speed but it's the high range in in the high range gearbox that I like uh, getting over that rock I actually did like pretty fine when I dropped my nose down the uh, bumper cleared that big rock which a lot of them have to push out of the way but yeah the light like, the front clearance is pretty bloody good because the front wheels are as near as makes no difference at the front of the truck so there isn't really any nose overhanging. I jumped that wall. I had a feeling it would, to be honest, because it's... Yeah, I've, I've, I believe I've jumped it before. I think I managed it once or twice, even without, like, before a wheel drive. Um, getting through the trees, I did cut out about 30 seconds there of me, like, steering backwards and forwards, but it did get through in the end. I clipped my... Uh, it was just the air filter on that tree. But I just reversed a tiny bit and drove out. Um... Yeah, well, it got through the trees eventually. It's definitely not as smooth as, like, the Dolphin or the Taiga. Or I think the Voron got through pretty nicely. But there is quite a lot of trucks that don't get through either. And this did, so fair play to it. As for the turning test, it's pretty standard issue. I don't mean that as a bad way, but there's loads of trucks that are about exactly the same as that. Like the ANK, the White Western Star, the Cap CT680. Like, three quarters of the trucks I've done are about exactly the same. The only ones that are sort of worse than that, say, is the two A's, like the Dolphin and John, and then uh, the Twin Steer. Ones that are better, the Derry 4520, because that had rear steer. Um, the Zix was very good, and the Kodiak C70, that was very good as well. 
Just left a little bit in there, a bit of road hauling. Obviously that's what this thing is. Well, that's what this thing was originally intended for, but now I would honestly say it's up there with some of the off-road trucks. Like, it's now all-wheel drive, it's got diff lock, so it's got everything all the off-road stuff's got. And I absolutely believe it was the right decision. Like, I don't think it's overpowered at all or anything like that. Like, there's there's loads of off-road stuff that's very specific that I believe would, uh, yeah, certainly beat it. But it is actually usable and practical now, I would say. And it doesn't feel like it's just going to let you down after two minutes. And I've used it quite a lot since uh, Jeff told me about the old Jeff special. Like, I've used this loads flying down the runways and across Smithfield Dam and all sorts but yeah as far as missions ever go it's like I just wouldn't bother because yeah when again when there's no power to the front axles they're just wheels that dig in and you're pushing from the back and they're just digging deeper into the mud and yeah they, they've got nothing to them to try and roll themselves back out the mud and it's, yeah, it's just not happening. Whereas now, obviously, yeah, all-wheel drive. I mean, it got through there. It was definitely slow. I've, I've drove faster stuff through there, but I've also drove stuff that gets stuck and uh, doesn't want to do it anymore. Uh, as for that, I got into high range going down there, which was pretty nice. I left this in, so I wanted to just... I'll have to do more testing, but I disconnected the trailer and the legs went down, but then when I went to drive off, it's like... I don't know if I was just on a bit of an unlucky bit, if I'm sat higher or whatever, but I also appreciate the back end of the trailer was a bit higher, but still, that's one of the only things I can remember where that's happened to me specifically, so... Um, yeah, I, I can't really say if it's a bad thing, but I just wanted to leave it there to say, you know, just bear it in mind so you don't end up... Obviously, I don't give a shit about them trailers, but if I was halfway across the map, ten foot from a mission, I would... Uh, yeah, even stayed in high going through that rock gap. I knew it'd get through there just fine. It's got about the same width rear end as uh, quite a lot of trucks. And again, going through that deep snow there, it does get pretty deep in that middle bit where it dips down. <laughs> That's what she said. And uh, low range diffs on, but again, it didn't ever feel like it was going to just get stuck and start wheel spinning, which it would with uh, without all-wheel drive. Or it'd be very hit and miss like I don't think you'd get through there every time you might do you know every now and then whatever but yeah but yeah driving down them uh, snowy roads it was fine this bit of snow here for some reason does seem a bit extra yeah like it's sort of a bit like that new Lake Cobb map where I've noticed it with loads of trucks but yeah just only for a little tiny section there as for the views like around, again, I like that view in my mirror, it's very nice, what I like to see in the mirror is I can see all my tyres, what they're doing and everything. That's actually clear enough, even as far back as I'm sat from the telly, that I can actually tell what's going on. <laughs> no, not looking where I'm going. That's pretty standard. Yeah, it'd be nice if their mud flaps were, like, if I could remove them I would, just so I could see my tyres and that. Can't find it, grind it. But yeah, going along here, high range doing night. I knew as I go up there, the say my horizon disappeared behind the bonnet, so it does block the horizon. It's not one of the worst, but it's not the best. Got through there very nicely, didn't catch its nose. I know I went a little bit wide, but one, it makes no difference to catching your nose anyway, and uh, it has no nose really to catch, so I believe you'd get through there. You know, 99 times out of 100 without any issues. Got through that mud pretty nicely. I believe I left even left it in high. I do like... If you remember, what was the bad one for it? The Freightliner 114 SD. As much as I thought it was a decent truck, that really didn't like... Mud, like, it couldn't take advantage of high very well in mud and that. Whereas this, actually, keeps pulling quite nicely. It's funny because they probably give the rear tyres a little bit of a boost because it never had a wheel drive and I believe now it's like yeah it does feel pretty nice because it's been given the front wheel drive as well 
It's um, yeah, like it honestly is like not bad. I I like quite like it now to be honest. I'm I'd be a lot more happy with using it on some missions. I did. I won't put it in this video because it's already long enough. But I I've got a bit of gameplay from uh, Lake Coved where I was using this. I did end up getting a bit distracted and messing around, and then I ended up yeah bringing a Navistar and stuff. But it drove pretty comfortably, pretty much across the Lake Coved map up to where you get like the um, radar trailer. But I did sink in the ice once I think that's why I ended up bringing the Navasar and then yeah I got a bit distracted <laughs> going across the, uh, across the rock bridge did like fine over there I think I smacked the nose on the first bit but again slightly bigger tires would help that but don't go you know flying across it in high range I just do because I'm testing and I'm messing around but uh, yeah did very nicely again through the snow nothing special but it still got down that dip and out the other side, even the TUZ-16, that new thing, that didn't like that bit because it sort of fell into the dip. And again, going along here, obviously I've definitely tried this before along here with, uh, without all-wheel drive, just while I was passing once I was doing the uh, old Jeff special on the icy roads. And yeah, not a chance it, without all-wheel drive. Going along now, I actually turned like, stopped editing and went back and got this earlier because... The first time, I don't think I went far enough over to the right. I kind of like, I was still further over than driving along the left. But yeah, I just I wasn't quite happy with it. So I went in there, did it again. To be honest, as you can see how slow it's going. I was trying between, you know, low range diffs on, etc, etc. Sometimes you can see like, well, does it have a little difference? But at the end of the day, it was slow to the point where I winched to that tree. Which is what I'd do. Like, sticking along the left, you you genuinely would drive out there in one. I did the first time, like and like I said, I still was a little bit over in the deeper mud, but just not, I wouldn't say both tyres were, so I wasn't quite happy with it. Going up here, uh, it's auto, obviously, in the snow. Did start to beach tight. You see, like, obviously they've added, like, the, uh, I don't even know what you call it, but, like, the transfer case or something that's, got the uh, front prop shaft, that's what I'm looking for. That little bit that's pointing down just behind the fuel tanks, that does actually catch. And uh, yeah, it's, like, it's a small price to pay for all-wheel drive, but it is there, it doesn't just clip through everything if you hit it on the right angle. And it can hook in pretty well if you get it on the right angle or wrong, I suppose. But it's not horrific for beaching. Like I say, the raised suspension is pretty decent. It does give it a good little lift. So, uh, yeah, it's not that bad for beaching. It's just not got the shortest wheelbase either. And then rolling there, as you can see, like, this hill tends to be the right kind of height that you roughly get back to your wheels. However, it's funny because if you land on your wheels, it's like, it has a good chance of staying there. I got like, I am still tilting quite a lot when I bounced there. But you see how the exhaust's kind of stabbing once I was going over and it can slow you down. Like again, it there could be situations where it helps, but largely speaking, if I had the option, I'd rather put slightly smaller exhausts on if I was going to go and do something where I want to give myself the best chances of not rolling. Or if I do roll, making it back to my wheels. Uh, yeah. The old uh, Tager and Lake. See there, I didn't accelerate. I did that on purpose. But you see how well it hooked onto the wall? If I wanted to winch something back, but then as soon as I press the accelerator, I just, it gets over the wall. But obviously, when I jumped in the Tager, Tager still made it over first time, but I kind of jumped off to the right, so me loaf couldn't hit the pipes and get some good air. So yeah, I had to uh, take them over by himself. Just showing you, this this is like a truck that has got better power. This has also got the big wide custom muds. I don't even think that was an edit. I didn't know it wasn't. That was a glitch. And um, yeah, it did. It got through. Like all I probably did was let off the accelerator and turn the camera around to watch the nose of it. See, this is why you get yourself a loaf. I mean, look, I've beached the nose. Loaf's pushing and helping, and now you think, oh, he's rolled, but. 
See, he's a professional, he knows what he's doing. Now I'm gonna reverse. Gotta go forward again, and I beached, he knows. Look at him. Pulls me arse end round to the left, and we're off. He does it again, and he's back. I mean, what a goddamn professional. Get yourself a life. He's in no trouble. So yeah, I'm obviously on my way, flip this back. Ended up being a pain in the ass just because it was near the trees. In fairness, I've uh, flipped it and then flipped it back about 10 or 20 times tonight and it ain't that bad for, like, it doesn't tend to drag along the floor for ages. It's pretty nice for flipping. The front front winch points are very wide, so because they're near the corners, they're like, yeah, it's not bad. It's, again, in the better half of the trucks for being able to flip it back over. Going up there, the first time it did a tip, which some of them do, but it is pretty planted on its wheels, but it's definitely, once you go far enough, like, it has got its uh, limit. But, it got it there, I put it in low range diffs on just to give it a go, I'd been up and down the mountains quite a bit at this point. We see, once it's gone, but it's still certainly not uh, horrible. Like the Royal, for example, tips far either. Give a tree a little slap. And since I, uh, like say, most of the night it landed on its wheels, so yeah, like I tend to know when I've, by the time I've rolled it 10 or 20 times, you can tell with some trucks, like yeah, this thing's just not good, or it's never usually a coincidence when something just keeps getting back to its wheels. There's only so long that you can have a lucky roll and a lucky bounce before it then is clearly like the characteristics of the truck that are helping or not helping. Funny, you know, I can't even remember what other video. That's the second time that exact same thing happened on the fuel trailer and tipped me back to my wheels. So that's why you leave leave trailers around. You never know. So turning test, just as I was uh, flying out of there, turned very nicely. Didn't click the car, nothing like that. Yeah, I've got it glitched there. Well, I apologise, I didn't realise it glitched there, but. It jumped over both them dips pretty nicely. Obviously, it didn't catch its bumper or anything, but it didn't slow down in high and stall or try and do anything like that. And going through here, I've got a loaf winch to me at the minute, but I again, I do with pretty much every test I've ever done. But I do disconnect it in a minute just to see if it makes much difference. I don't believe it does, to be honest. That's why I was like, nah, <laughs> get him back. Loaf's actually better through here than you think, but um, yeah, I don't, I don't know if you guys have noticed this. I can't remember if I leave it in the footage later, but when you winch something, recently it's like it dries forward, then puts the brakes on, then dries forward. It's, I don't know. It's like just keeps sort of kangarooing forwards rather than just driving at you. Yeah, I think I need to make that a bit smoother again. But yeah, got the, got through there, which again, the not to be harsh on it because I like it, but the TUZ16, that uh, had to use the winch going through that last bit of deeper water. I'm going along here, it feels very nice and planted. Not any real issues or anything like that. The load, I was going to say, he's there. He's there. But I don't think it would have made any difference, to be honest. That's one reason I do like the loaf, is when you're towing it behind stuff, it doesn't really affect it. It's like you try and tow the tatter in behind you, it's, you're going to feel it. doesn't really, I don't know if anything's got enough horsepower to overcome that. Um, yeah, driving down here, it was going nicely, and then I clipped that bloody trailer. I just, there's nothing about them trailers that I like, <laughs> to be honest. Even sabotaging me now. I just can't be arsed driving it back. I'm getting a little trailer collection again, I will. I am considering having a little tidy up one night, but we'll see. <laughs> Time permitting. Too many things to be getting done without taking trailers back all night. Yeah, put the cargo in. It's like it's definitely packed cargo now. Drove through there, and I actually don't think. Yeah, if I hit a big rock, it would have just stopped me. But I don't believe that was a lucky run. In fact, I know it wasn't because I drove through there three times and collected cargo. So, a couple of things to show you here. This was, um, I'd already 
got basically to the top of the first hill, but I let it down for another run. And look, when I put the handbrake on, it did lift my nose up, and it was just... I'm not saying it was bad for it, but I got unlucky there and it did it, and yeah. As for flipping back, though, if you can sort of tell from there, like, the winch point is very nice near the corner, so... I wasn't sure if the loaf would do it then. I mean, shouldn't have had me doubts, but... Because the trailer was at a bit of a weird angle. This... I tell you, it's done this to me once or twice before, and I don't like it. It's like, I put the winch on, and that thing, because the physics is holding it where it is... The second the winch attached, it just started pulling me backwards because it just suddenly, like, when you attach a winch, the physics freezing stops and it just dropped that thing back down the hill. I didn't even have time to get in gear. I just took the handbrake off because I wasn't expecting that to happen. And yeah, rolled the goddamn loaf. Um, obviously got the loaf sorted, got back up here, and the thing rolled. And I was at that point where I was just looking at the loaf for a second, I was like, I was so close to this going nicely <laughs> and then that goddamn physics thing like I drove the GMC up the hill and put the handbrake on then when I switched to the loaf it suddenly was like it re-dropped a few foot and just absolutely that was it it was like started violently rolling backwards down the hill and yeah I don't like that they need to, I don't know how they get around that because I don't know put the handbrake on for an extra three quarters of a second a second or something after you winched or something because I remember it doing it before with other stuff like it's more that if it drops a truck when you're in a bit of a precarious position to begin with that sudden physics introduction again can like make you tip where you normally wouldn't however it then made up for it I'd had a good five six seven attempts to get up this hill by this point and I'd never got over the like the first bit of the hill I got sort of my front end on the first ledge but I never really got the rear end and the trailer up over that last little bit but this time which I was just going to try and drive up and attach a uh, winch to the loaf and yeah it drove up and again this definitely packed cargo you can see though I did use the um, loaf to get over a bump I don't believe well, I don't know if you're lucky I'd say about 10% chance you probably could get up that second hill on your own I probably just hit a small stone and that was literally the difference between making it and not making it so I did a winch to the loaf for like half a second a second and then eventually when I was most of the way up I probably could have sat there revving it but I was low on fuel at the time so I stuck a winch on the that telegraph pole thing and uh, yeah so it wasn't far off definitely give it the first hill because it did do that in the end the second one yeah like maybe but I wouldn't bank on it take a loaf going up here I kind of knew by now like I'd done seven or eight attempts at the other hills so I was pretty certain that it was not going to have a chance I don't like as well that while I'm halfway up that hill it won't let me unpack the cargo you have to get down to like flatter ground maybe it's for the best I don't know <laughs> it's a pain in the ass when It'd be a lot more convenient if you could just unpack it when you want. Um, yeah, obviously when you unpack cargo, it basically takes all the weight out of it. Or certainly out of the trailer. And There is a little bit of weight to it, but nothing like nowhere near. You can see when I unpack it, the trailer like bounces back up like it's just had 90% of the weight removed. Uh, yeah, it drove up then with unpacked cargo. I use a little winch because tyres are catching on that rock. Most stuff does at this point. But it did get up there. It didn't tip to the right once I was up there. Again, though, actually, to kind of scrap that because it is still unpacked at this point. Packed it again. Obviously, I've never actually done that in my own mission gameplay, but I have done it on here, like doing the reviews because it's of no game gain to me. Fly down there, though, didn't catch its bumper, didn't tip over to the right as I made the angle cleared its fuel tanks there everything pretty much catches the legs there no bumper hits that or nothing that I could visibly notice so yeah got down there pretty damn fine driving up there that's to be honest about the best attempt I had I tried reversing up and having another three or four goes but you can see that big rock in the way I ended up sending it through between the axles but 
started tipping. I was like, oh no, that goddamn trailer. First time it's ever done anything useful. Just so happened that earlier when it caught my trailer, <laughs> it landed in exactly the right spot to save me 20 minutes later. Uh, yeah, obviously, extra tests. That's why the videos are uh, they're slowly sort of getting longer as I've been doing the reviews because just kind of found extra little tests. But yeah, we've got a new map. I mean, look at that. I already knew what was coming. You can see me <laughs> full locking my steering already. Not just because I was drifting. I, I, yeah, I've just specialed this thing enough to know <laughs> when you start drifting, it will eventually dig in and roll. So there's quite a few things there to sort of explain on this ice. Obviously, again, all-wheel drive absolutely makes a difference, and I can show you that pretty well coming up pretty soon. It's definitely got some weight to the front. Like, it's got some weight to it. It's not ridiculously heavy, but it's not one of them trucks that weighs nothing. Well, the back end is pretty light, but again, with this ice, it can go either way. Like, this ice is an element of luck, and I also wanted to say, while it's sort of there to be shown... This isn't like just a sheet of ice with pure water underneath. You can see like that middle bit. There is like, it's almost like a dense slush puppy underneath the ice. But there is also rocks. And so I hit a rock the other day when I was uh, just pulling a truck out of there. And I, yeah, there was like, there's basically, you know, terrain and stuff under there. But, or maybe not many places, but I definitely hit a rock or something because it was absolutely not moving anywhere. Of course... Brought the old loaf, get yourself a loaf. All I wanted to do was get the front axles up. And at this point I was like, yeah, I'll, I want to know myself, like, can it pull its way out now or is it going to have a bit of a whinge? But to be fair, the back end is fairly light, so it's not particularly bad light. The biggest issue is obviously the front axle because it's just one tyre, it's not got dual rears or anything like that, so it's uh, yeah, it's a lot of weight just on those two points. You see here, going over in low, this is one thing I've found with the ice, I'm not necessarily saying flat out is the best way but, if you go too slow, it's like the ice has got time to break through and yeah, you, you need enough speed to where you're not spending too long on each little slab of ice like you can see now going over in auto and it started to go in the middle there but because I'm still pushing it's just yeah it hasn't got time and then now when I turn a wheel drive off I know you obviously you can't sort of visibly see the difference because the front wheels are just rolling along but because they're not biting in when you're going along the ice they're just yeah like trolley wheels and as soon as they start punching through the ice there's no power to them to climb your way back out so as soon as your front end drops you just start pushing from the rears and you just bury yourself deeper which I mean sometimes is a lot of fun but this is neither the time nor place for it put a wheel drive back on I'm able to climb my way out so yeah it it makes a bigger difference that I well, to be honest it wouldn't surprise me in real life I'm sure it makes a bloody big difference but yeah in this game it really does as well I was trying to uh, roll it because I wanted to try and demonstrate something. Got pretty lucky <laughs> that side punched through the ice. So, but you see now, watch like see there the exhaust stabbed into the ice. That's why I did it earlier, but it wasn't. I don't even know if I saved it or what. I was just messing around. And um, yeah, that's where the exhaust like you could theoretically roll and it catches a bit and it's just enough that you then roll back to your wheels. Blah blah blah. But again, if I had the choice. Um, yeah, I'd probably go for like just an exhaust under the truck or whatever. As cool as they do look though, I must admit. Uh, going for the Jeff specials, like, hang on. <laughs> What's that ice doing? I've definitely been here before. Yeah, it's of no real use other than, again, to do the Jeff special. Well, I at the minute, I admit, I was doing like the lazier version where normally you have to be in 8th gear but with the highway trucks. Take all-wheel drive off, but yeah, you can go into high when you're in about 7th and you'll fly up to Jeff's special speeds. Nice little backflip. Well, <laughs> I don't know if you call it nice. Looked good, but didn't do me any favours. I mean, we test this ice. 
yeah, you can see there as well, like, I've punched through a bit, but it's not like you just suddenly drop through into a deep lake or anything. Not that I'd advise it. Well, that's my favourite way to cross is the Jeff Special, but as you can see, it deleted my truck a bit. However, this is what I want to show you. I don't know why, whilst I kind of have a gut feeling. I think it's better at going across the ice when the suspension's smashed. And I don't think it's going to make a world of difference for the rear, because they're dual rears and the rear doesn't particularly weigh a lot. But with the fronts, I reckon, as the ice starts to break, you're already kind of catching, like, the rear fender, or not the rear fenders, but behind the front axle and the fuel tanks. And I reckon you're kind of skidding along the ice to where, yeah, it's just helping spread the weight that little bit more. Like, obviously, when the suspension's fully there, you're just a lot taller and there's a lot more tyre to punch through without anything else interrupting that. Whereas now, it just appears like, I don't know, I mean, eventually, yeah, I dropped through, like, it whether it's luck or it's a thinner bit of ice like the whole truck just seems to drop through in one then and at this point yeah I can't get out but as you can see though between my front and rear axles it's not like the ice is just breaking away and disappearing there's either solid ice or something there that I'm basically beached in the middle of now so yeah I just recovered uh, speed test along the runway, I did adjust special, I did eventually manage one without adjust special, <laughs> but the funny thing is I got all-wheel drive on this truck and one of the first things I did <laughs> was go to the runway, turn all-wheel drive off and Jeff special it. That was my way of testing out all-wheel drive. Obviously this was like the other day, not tonight or anything. See, it did start falling there, but it went the right way. Oh yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm, in, the, I'm in the oil business now, boys business is on the up and up. In fact, I'll have to edit it in and show you how I managed to get that fuel tank in <laughs> the second one up there, because it was pretty good, I thought. Anyway, all in good time for that one. Um, yeah, next up, swimming test, and, well, as you'll see. So at this point, I was waiting for it, obviously, to reach the uh, top of the snorkel that's well, kind of halfway between the bonnet and the roof. Uh, it started floating. So there's another floater. At least the back... Well, the back does stay down. However, as you can see, it basically crawled until it just came to a halt and that was it. Like It doesn't go through like the Voron or the Twin Steer or... Freightliner 114 SD. So I came back for a drowning test, possibly. <laughs> That's looking like, hmm. Was it just me, or does that look like dolphin flying distance? There's only one way to find out. Well, GMC was too far, but got ourselves a trailer. I'll take it. Hang on. <laughs> Is it dolphin approved now? Yes. I officially headbutted it before I hit the floor. That'll do. So I was trying to come back for oh yeah, that was it. Have I got them on? Yeah, the off-road tires. I wanted to try and cross the water. I just wanted to see maybe. To be fair, there was no tire grooves like I was still on solid rock when I was driving in the water. However, I wanted to know. It held me up like that physics in the air again, dropped me, I mean, got an emergency deployment loaf on standby. Little Scandinavian flip, does a job every time. See, that's why you get yourself a loaf. I'm guaranteed it would have landed on its wheels even if I didn't hit that cargo. Right now it's like loaf. Don't make me put you in high gear. That's right. He knows. Of course I can go deeper. I'm in a loaf. Do whatever you like when you're packing loaf. You got the winch that'll make you flinch. You got the length that'll give you strength. You got the tires that'll fulfil your desires. <laughs> That's right. Goddamn professional. <laughs> Go on, my son. Butter the whole slice. <laughs> There's only two people in the world. That'll make sense to. That's the only people it needs to. Uh, yeah. Finally. I mean, of course. 
life save the day. I'm a goddamn professional. Um, yeah, I attempted it with the off-road tyres. It's not the mud flaps or anything, or mud guards, I suppose. They're not really getting in the way. I don't know, to be honest. Just for whatever reason, maybe it's because it revs kind of low. It only revs to 1500, which even for a truck is fairly low, but yeah, for whatever reason it just won't. I can see obviously those like patches of snow or ice or whatever underwater and it was having none of it. Obviously I did a fair amount out, like I had a pretty good go before this as well, like there was quite a few times I jumped down there. Um, yeah, in conclusion, I honestly think it's a pretty bloody good truck now. Again, I'm not comp like the Vorons etc are priced as such and they are good enough that it's like they're competing for the top trucks in the game but this is easily the best highway truck now but yeah it's pretty bloody good to be honest even compared to like a lot of the other trucks I mean yeah again Voron, Grad, the Tega, the Dolphin they'd eat it for breakfast in an actual like head to head but I don't know even though they'd eat it for breakfast it's just it's not like this is bad it's now very usable, it's doable, especially on some of the lighter cargo missions, etc. Like, yeah, I've been using it. Um, I can't remember the mission I had to do in the end yesterday on Lake Cobd. I believe it was only like discovering something or whatever, though. I didn't really have to haul anything, but yeah, I'd absolutely recommend it. If you sold it, I'd buy it back. I mean, look at it fully upgraded, it was only like 60 grand, and I knew I had uh, like almost a 20 grand winch on it, so I was like, really? Is that only 60 grand with um. Yeah, all the stuff I've got on it, and uh, yeah, looking there, I mean, look at it, it's like 26 grand. I was looking at it, I was like, that's less than a yard, and not that I've got anything against the yard, I'm just saying, that's a scout, and this thing's still four grand cheaper than that, it's one of the cheapest trucks in the game, I'd say, and uh, yeah, 26 grand to 60 grand, and really, I'd definitely recommend having the best winch on it, but you know what I mean, if you could live without that, you're now talking 40 odd grand, remove the snorkel and stuff yeah you, you could be talking like 35 grand at a scrape and you'd have a relatively like fully upgraded truck so uh, yeah I definitely think it's worth getting like say it's only gonna be 20 minutes on a contest or something it's worth buying back and giving it a go and yeah that's my conclusion that's about it for today really it's just last couple of bits of uh, messing around I'll show you how I got the um, second fuel trailer <laughs> up there I believe this was yesterday when I was messing around and again I was like testing it out by the time I'd finished doing all this sort of stuff I didn't have time for a review. So anyway, dolphin goes flying, hit the end of the trailer, <laughs> seesaw, like catapult that into the air, ta-da, see the Exxon Valdez has got nothing on me, when I fuck an Alaskan beach it stays fucked, I mean look at it, got that masterpiece, yeah I was pretty bloody happy with that to be honest didn't plan for it <laughs> but it happened so happy went for another go on your head son I was like oh no don't you do it dolphin don't fuck my aviation business up no way I'll crack the Saudi Arabian market with just one I mean like I've, I've flown enough scout trailers eventually they learn what's happening and they just stay flown Yeah, one last little hit, didn't take much damage, but I think I've already headbutted the shit out of it, to be honest, so there aren't really a lot left to damage on it. And yep, looking around like, that's good, my work here, <laughs> my work here is done. I was trying to scare them barrels. Them sons of bitches are loaf trained or something. Drive by horn. <laughs> it's fucking guy. This is the kind of guy I'd want as my neighbour. Anyone who's that happy for a D's nuts joke. What a fucking legend. Oh tree. I have the right to travel without hindrance. This is a goddamn free country I tell you. I'm feeling lucky. I'm gonna go for it.